It's that time of the year. The days are getting shorter. It's cold outside. It's also when we start looking back at the past year and what a year it was over on Fox, or as I've described it this year, the bullshit factory. Just in the last week, they've been churning out so much BS, it's hard to keep up. Laura Ingram did this bit where she pretended to not understand that Netflix has a show called You. You know, I was watching an episode of uh, You where measles came up. Wait, wait, wait. When did I mention measles? I don't know. It was on you. What? 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 What was on me? What are you talking about? Right? What is Raymond even hearing what I'm saying? I never had the measles. Was on you. We never did a. <laughs> We never did a measles and vaccine episode. Am I, is this a joke? I, know. I don't even know it what you're talking about. It was on you. It was on you. I've never had, Raymond, I've never had measles. What are you talking about? This is stupid. It was an episode of a show, Laura. Well, what's it called? You. Ingram insisted this was all a scripted segment. The problem is, and how should I put this, we all thought it was real because it's Laura Ingram. That's why it's funny. You also had Jesse Waters suggesting that the recent concert tragedy in Houston had something to do with Satanism. So the stage we're seeing right now, that looks to you like the gates of hell, the way that I guess they designed that? It seemed like it wanted you to go to the other side. And so it did seem that yeah, you're kind of going down, you know, Dante's Inferno, the various stages of, of hell. There's flames uh, kind of in the front there, and you're kind of going deeper and deeper. Oh, we're going deeper and deeper. Jesse, if you're looking for the gates of hell or Dante's Inferno, check out the studio just down the hallway and listen for the maniacal laugh. Be careful, though. The doorknob might be hot. So the one thing we know for sure about Kamala Harris is we should all be very, very grateful to have her because she's historic for reasons that no one ever explains. But there's a lot we don't know about Kamala Harris. Most people probably don't know she really grew up in Canada. That's where she went to high school. She's not from this country in that sense, or she's certainly also from Canada. Okay, didn't know that. Doesn't mean that she's not gonna be a good vice president, but why haven't we heard that? Yes, Tucker Carlson, your suggestion that Kamala Harris isn't quite American because she spent part of her childhood in Canada has put you over the top. We once honored you with the distinction of Bullshit Factory Employee of the Month. But now that 2021 is coming to an end, we decided to recognize you as our first ever Bullshit Factory Employee of the Year. That's right, Tucker, you've earned it. You've spent the past year peddling vaccine conspiracy theories about Bill Gates. You've served as a mouthpiece for white supremacists who embrace the Great Replacement Theory. You spread the false flag conspiracy theory that Trump supporters were not responsible for the insurrection on January 6th, only to contradict yourself days later. And now your latest low light, you had a crew embedded with Kyle Rittenhouse during his trial. Yes, during his trial. It's the stuff that keeps you up at night. Like, once you finally do get to sleep, your dreams are about what happened and you're waking up in a, in a dark, cold sweat. Yeah. You've had dreams about what happened? Every single night. It's, a, it's quite scary, actually, because the dreams feel so real and they're not the same at all. They're all different. They're the different scenarios that run through your head what could have happened. What makes this so shameful is that you were filming this latest piece of one-sided right-wing propaganda while Fox was slamming other media outlets for their coverage of the trial. Of course, projection and whataboutism are two key pillars of the Fox News bullshit factory. How else could the factory churn out lie after lie after lie? Which reminds me of something Tucker acknowledged earlier this year. I mean, I lie. If I'm really cornered or something, I lie. I really try not to. I try never to lie on TV. I, try, I just don't, you know, I don't like lying. I certainly do it, you know, out of weakness or whatever. Or whatever. So congratulations. Enjoy the honor. This was a tough decision because we had to limit the award to current employees of Fox, not, a, not aspiring ones. Uh, Ted Cruz, he could have been a contender with his recent criticism of Big Bird and his accusation that Liz Cheney suffers from Trump derangement syndrome. I look at the situation of Liz Cheney and I just think it's sad. I think she falls into the category of people 
who, who Donald Trump just broke, just shattered. Senator. She's lashing out at Trump, Senator. at Republicans, at everything, and she's become a Democrat. And it's, it's sad to she watch what partnered. has happened. It is Trump derangement syndrome. Cheney's response was pointed. I think that uh, Trump broke Ted Cruz. Uh, Ted used to say he was a constitutional conservative, um, but now he is like so desperate for political approval that he will even advocate, suggest secession. Um, and uh, I think that a real man would be defending his wife and his father and the Constitution. Absolutely. But what almost did it for me was this Cruz tweet slamming Biden for his plan to spend Thanksgiving with his family on Nantucket. Cruz tweeted, there once was a man from Nantucket, which begs the question, is he trolling himself now? Because immediately there were so many renditions of there once was a man from Nantucket about Ted Cruz. They were everywhere. And mine goes like this. There once was a man named Ted. When Texas froze, he fled. He went to Cancun, but came back too soon. Rest in peace, irony, you are dead. The reason why Cruz and Carlson spend so much of their time spreading manure is because there is a marketplace for it. And that marketplace is dominated by Fox News, so much so that it has spawned copycats like Newsmax and OAN. The head of Fox News, Rupert Murdoch, has indicated he's ready to move on from Trump. Murdoch recently told his shareholders conservatives will be held back if Trump stays focused on the past and that the past is the past and it's time for conservatives to think about the future. I wonder if the company Murdoch runs or the Republican Party he controls will even listen to that. I kind of doubt it. Look at how the GOP responded to one of its own, Paul Gosar, being censured for sharing a violent anime depicting him attacking prominent Democrats with swords. Today, we're critiquing Paul Gosar's anime. Next week, we might be indicting the Wiley e. Coyote for a uh, Unexplo for an explosive ordinance against the roadrunner. Or really anything Marjorie Taylor Greene has to say. We need a good plan that restores America back to the republic that it was originally founded to be because our freedoms are so precious, Steve, that we do not want to lose them. And the only way you get freedom back after you've lost it was, is with the price of blood. The price of blood. Ted Cruz talks about Trump derangement syndrome, but what we have just played for you sounds pretty deranged to me. Fox News can't run away from Trump or Trumpism. Fox is Trump and Trump is Fox. This idea that Rupert Murdoch is suddenly going to change course, pull the plug now. I'm calling bullshit on that one, too.